Hi, today we are going to be talking about uh, mixing colors. And so hopefully you've got your palette already out, your egg carton with your red, yellow, blue, black, and white. Maybe some of you have some green and brown in there, but not too many other colors. So um, we're going to do something that's called extended image today. We're going to glue down part of a famous painting. Now I collect calendars of, uh, that they're usually some beautiful calendars of Monet paintings and Van Gogh's paintings. So sometimes you can find those calendars in January and February. I don't know what month you're watching this video, but hopefully you can start a collection of those calendars. The paper is thicker than a Xerox paper that, and if you, if you want to just um, print out a famous painting that might work, but calendars work better. So, um, <clears throat> the thicker painter, pa the thicker paper, uh, it adheres to the canvas a little bit better and doesn't warp as much as a, just a piece of um, uh, typing paper or a Xerox paper. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is cut out a small, uh, today uh, I'm going to show you a small portion of a Monet painting and then I, I'm going to complete it. It's a springboard to helping us to get started on a painting without looking completely at the whole, copying the whole Monet painting. Um, also, there is a video called Linnea in Monet's Garden, and it's a book. It's a 1992 film. Uh, you can go to the library and get it, and uh, you don't have to, but it's a really cute little movie about the book that was actually uh, by Christina Bjork in 1938. It's about a, a little girl who she and her grandfather went on a trip on an airplane to Paris and they wanted to see Monet's garden. Monet lived in a beautiful home in France and he <clears throat> made a, a pond in, the, in his backyard so that he would have every day a place where he could go out right out his back door and paint the beauty of nature. He was an impressionist painter and uh, we're going to do a lot of looking at impressionist paintings. So um, he, he just enjoyed light. Most all of the impressionist painters painted outside and they liked the sunlight coming through the trees and how the sunlight reflected off the water and and uh, the different colors of, of the light that formed on the path or in the, through the woods on the, on the ground or in the, on the leaves. <clears throat> so, so we're going to talk about Monet today and, and I'm going to show you this. This is one of my students paintings. Um, she has already glued a portion of Monet's painting, the calendar that she just cut apart and then she's extending the image on the right and the left so that you can see she's she's trying to copy these colors um, copying the blues and the pinks and the yellow greens that are here she cut she started with a black background because she saw a lot of black in the uh, background of the painting itself and then she started with the bridge and she's finishing the, the bridge, the rails of the bridge. And then she started going down and, and painting the, the, some trees and texture in the water. And she's trying to get it to look like this. She has to mix the colors in order to do that. Um, I'm going to um, put this, and, and by the way, I reuse cardboard and paper, painting paper, canvas paper, a lot. And you can take um, gesso. This is a white chalky gesso, Liquitex gesso, and paint over top of anything that you don't want to keep. 
and you can keep working and practicing on old paintings that you don't maybe you don't like and you don't want to keep them don't throw them away so just put some gesso over top of them and keep going um, i'm going to put a little piece of a calendar picture right here and i can use a glue stick um, if you if you have a glue stick, you know that will work. Just put it along the edges of your um, get it really good on the edges so that you can yeah the edges so that you can um, put it down really tightly. But you can also use um, this is called uh, a liquid gel medium. And I use this for gluing things to my canvas. I had a student the other day who wanted to paint a, a cat, the face of a cat, with a butterfly on his nose. And the butterfly was something she wanted to glue down. And sometimes a glue stick doesn't really work very well when you're gluing something down to the canvas. So this is a wonderful, it's, a, it's an acrylic gel medium. And this is really good for gluing something down. So I'm going to put this on the edges of my paper, all the way around the edges. And I'm going to <clears throat> glue it down to my board. Figure out where you want to put it. Maybe I'm going to go right here. And then push it down really tightly. And hopefully it won't buckle, especially if you put a book on it after your paint dries a little bit and you let it sit for a while, put a book on it so that it will go down really smoothly. And then you've got your paint in your egg carton. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to move this around so that you can see it. Goodness, you can't see it. There it is. Yes. And so now you're going to be able to start painting that light background and the water. The water that's coming across through there. So I'm going to go ahead and since the water is there now i've got a blue mix that's not quite that blue so i'm going to take a little bit of red and mix it with some red to make it a little more of a purpley blue uh, maybe a little more red seeing if i can match it now remember you could buy that blue right in the tube but remember we're trying to learn to mix colors and that's not quite it so i'm going to add some more red and some white and sometimes you're not going to be able to get it exactly but i can get close so you see if you can get close um, that looks a little bit light um, let's see if i can get even closer that's even closer right there so i'm going to make my water come all the way over the object is to hide this picture, this picture, so well that you can't tell that the painting is there. It's you're hiding this within your painting. So you're going to go ahead and you could actually put a, a background color on all over if you wanted to, like uh, my student did with the Monet painting, but you don't have to. You can go ahead and now this sandy gray color. Oh, how in the world am I gonna make that? I'm gonna try some yellow. Yellow and blue makes green, but I can add some red to it and get more of a gray color. A little bit more red and white, this takes some practice in order to be able to do this. But you see I'm getting a more of a gray color in, in here, that's a little bit. Maybe I need a tiny bit more yellow and red. Let's see how close I can get to it. All right, that's close, it needs, it's a little bit too dark. And your paint will dry a little darker 
So you don't want to get it too dark to start with. All right, there's some rocks. This rock is going to come down here. And I'm continuing to paint some of these rocks and trying to match the color. Those rock colors get darker over here, so I need to try to get them a little darker in here, even darker. I need to go with my dark colors, my blue and my red, to get these darker colors that are down here. And of course, you do have some black. You should have some black, hopefully. I didn't squeeze any black out, so I could maybe use a little bit of the black in there too. Uh, let me see what I can do with this. Um, that's close. Look how close I'm getting, and I don't have any black at all. So I'm getting it a little closer. It's a little bit green, so I could maybe add a touch of red to it again. Red and green. Red neutralizes the green to make it a little more gray. So I'm seeing that I've got some of this dark color down here. If a tiny, tiny bit of black in there would probably help a little bit too. Um, there's a dark green over here on this side where I have my, my bushes. So I'm, oh, that's an easy one to make. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I can continue there and maybe put a little more green coming down here and uh, go back and I should be brush washing my brush out but I'm trying to hurry so that you can see me but don't try to use the same brush all the time uh, you need to wash it out every now and then it gets a nice clean brush so that you don't make muddy colors but I do have a little bit of a sandy color that I can put down here to try to get some more rocks coming in the darker colors of those rocks down in here and maybe in here, maybe a darker color over here, and uh, some darker colors in here next to the water, right in here. And then the sky uh, can, let's see, the sky, goodness, that's gonna be a light color. So even though you're mixing a lot of uh, colors in there, you've gotta have a lot of white. A lot of white. Let's see. That's a little bit not right. Let's see if this works. Maybe. It's got kind of a purpley tint to the sky. So red and blue makes purple. See, this is, I've got lots of paint here that I'm mixing. Lots of paint. Got some uh, more orangey colors down here at the bottom. So or red and yellow makes orange. So right at the very line here at the bottom of your uh, sky next to the horizon line, it's a warmer color right down here. And I need more white. It's getting, it's going to be too dark, but. I see some of that warm color through here and through here. And then up in here, some of that warm color goes back into the blues. Oh, it's still too dry to do, do too much there. I'm trying to mix something that's not really mixing very good. But um, then if you wanted to put some big white puffy clouds or some more you can start with your imagination. Once you get around your picture, you can change it a little bit. You can put some really cool um, blue sky up here. And so, you know, but, but right around that picture is where you are trying to match your colors. That's a little bit harder. You can put some white puffy clouds. and keep working in with some more white clouds. 
maybe get your little tiny um, rigger or liner and put in a few birds up here flying in over the water and you could put a sailboat now, this is where it's really fun to just use your imagination and figure out what else is going on over here there's a boat now sailboats lean in and they have the wind in their sails they, they aren't always straight up and down so you could put a big sail i don't know which way i want to go maybe this way with my sail or maybe just another little sail in here on the need a smaller brush but you can uh complete the the painting with just your own fun ideas um, some pretty white sand or some sea oats or some more rocks over here some big clouds over here and that's what I want you to do. So find a calendar where you can cut out a small portion of the calendar and glue it somewhere on your um, board or your paper, your canvas paper, and enjoy painting and mixing colors and post it on the Facebook page. Um, Online Art for Kids Facebook so we can see what beautiful artwork you are doing. Thank you. Bye.